Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This week, I am giving you my first impressions on the Elogu Mars 2 Pro. Before we start, I just wanted to let you guys know that I did start a Patreon, and I'm starting to post content on there including behind the scenes footage, design tutorials, and much more. I'd love for you to sign up, it's only $1 a month and it goes a long way. Now on to the video. The first step is to raise the build platform by going into the tools and clicking the manual icon. This will raise the z-axis so the build platform can be placed. Next step is to remove the screws attached to the resin tank to initiate the calibration of the printer. This part that I'm holding is called the build platform. This will be supporting the prints while it raises from the resin tank. Here I'm just loosening the rotary knob so I can safely attach it to the Z-axis and tighten it firmly. The Elegu Mars 2 Pro has only one axis, which makes the calibration process very simple in comparison to the PLA 3D printer that I reviewed last time, which has the X, Y, and Z axis. The next step here is to loosen the screws above the build platform. This was a struggle for me because they were on there pretty good. After about 5 minutes of struggling, I finally got it, thankfully. This step is necessary however because we want to make sure that there's proper alignment before we start printing. Next here, we're going to take off the film on the LCD screen and prepare for calibration. The next step here is to take a sheet of paper and place it in between the LCD screen and the build plate. This will provide an estimate measurement of a single layer and allow us to align the plate. Make sure your plate is straight, unlike mine, <laughs> and tighten the screws. Start with the front one first. You'll know your axis is in proper alignment when there's some resistance on the sheet of paper, but you can still pull it out with slight effort. After the leveling is complete, we're going to set the current z-axis position as the initial height of the first layer of printing. Here we are raising the axis back up so we can test the LCD light and place our resin tank. We can test the UV light by going to the previous interface and selecting Exposure. Elegu added their logo, which I thought was a nice touch and pretty creative. Next step here is to put back the resin tank and tighten it with the corresponding screws. I just wanted to mention quickly that taking safety precautions with resin is very important. Through my research, I've read that photopolymer UV resin that is uncured is not safe on the skin and can quickly be absorbed. This can result in irritations, allergic reactions, and respiratory issues down the line with ex repeated exposure. What I'm showing you here is a few items that came with the printer that really made this process super simple. Two very essential items that did not come with the printer were the isopropyl alcohol and the resin, which you can both get on Amazon or you can get the alcohol from a pharmacy. After our calibration and setup is complete, it is time to download the Chitsu Box slicer that comes with the Elegu Mars Pro. This can be accessed by plugging in the USB stick that came with the printer into your computer or laptop and opening the slicer software file folder. There are download options available for both Mac and Windows, but for some reason it wasn't working on my iMac. I believe it had something to do with it being a foreign software and the iMac wasn't recognizing it and it wouldn't open it. So I opened it up on my Alienware computer and it opened up quite perfectly. Through my research, I have found that the Chitsu Box Slicer is very fast and efficient, allows you to print multiple items at once, and gives you the option to individually rearrange files or auto-arrange them. It also allows you to input values and rescale values and mirror parts, which is really cool. 
I've noticed that a lot of people have said that this is uncommon in a lot of other resin softwares, so I'm happy to have access to these features. The print that I'm choosing is this lion. I'm going to be applying some supports to it so it prints out properly. This slicer is extremely user friendly and breaks down its key features very simply. The supports that I will be using are the heavy support settings, so it's sturdy and secures the print in place. The supports that you see here are the default settings that automatically seek out sections that need to be supported through the printing process. The Chitsu Box Slicer software can be used on various 3D printers. We have to indicate what printer we are using by going into the settings and selecting our model. All the necessary information needed to print is already included. A feature that I found interesting is that you can input the price of your resin bottle and it will notify you how much your print will cost by calculating the amount of resin used. Another interesting feature is that a purple shadowing that you can see on the model here notifies you of any areas that may need extra support for a quality print. This allows you to kind of gauge where you need to add or move certain supports. To add or remove supports, you can just click on the plus or minus icon in the bottom sidebar. Then you hover over a place where you want to add or subtract a support and left click to place or remove. Before I save this model back on the USB stick, I use a tool that allows you to see how the models print layer by layer. This is extremely helpful because you can observe if there are any edges that need supports. By doing this, I realized that the tail could use some extra support along with the legs. Once we are happy and confident with our model, we can slice it and save it back on the USB to print. Now I'm going to show you how I take precautionary measures before using the resin. My room is pretty snug so I have my windows open and a fan on to maintain ventilation in the room. Here I'm putting on two masks because the one provided is a little bit big and I'm also putting on some gloves. It's also a good idea to wear a long sleeve to protect your forearms from any resin exposure. I also recommend having some paper towel nearby to catch any drips of resin and a paper or plastic bag to directly discard them. Once we got our PPE on, we can remove the lid and shake up the resin and fill up our resin tank. Here I'm using the measuring cup that was provided and filling about a cup and a half or 150 ml into the tank. And that's all to it. Once we filled our tank, we carefully place the lid back on and prepare by placing in our USB stick and pressing print. We select the model that we want to print and press OK. This model took about an hour and a half and was approximately 815 layers. So this was my first print and overall I am happy with it, however it did turn out a lot smaller than I thought. Um, obviously I had to take into consideration that it is relative to the platform, but in the slicer it appeared bigger, but um, I'm going to attempt this once again using the scaling feature. After the lion I did decide to print one of the default files that were on the printer and they came out very well. The writing is very bold and pronounced and there doesn't seem to be any errors in this one. Next, I'm going to be washing the models by placing isopropyl alcohol in this dog bowl, which is all I have at the moment, so please don't judge me. 
and scraping off the models off the platform which I once again failed to do and place it in the bowl and kind of swirl it around so that the alcohol gets on the model last but not least we're going to be cutting out the supports using the clippers provided and yeah after that we have a finished product overall these clippers are very good quality they give you a very good angle of cutting and with this being a small model i was kind of hesitant with using these clippers because i thought i would damage it but honestly it was very easy and i managed to get them all off with the model looking quite flawless besides the fact that he's missing a leg but you know what we'll just disregard that <laughs> and yeah overall i'm super happy i love this printer in about a few weeks or a month i'm gonna give my overall review of how it's going for me and if you guys have any questions about it i'll answer them there but i'm really excited to start printing out my jewelry and please like and subscribe if you like this video and i'll see you guys next week